Welcome to Hockey Canada's Skill Development Series. In this, the fifth part of our series, we'll cover the fundamentals of offensive tactics. Offense, quite simply, begins the instant a team gains possession of the puck. Offensive tactics are essentially a combination of the skills we learned in the first four parts of our series. Skating, puck control, shooting and scoring, and checking. When utilized with speed and control, these skills enable an individual or an offensive team to be creative and deceptive. In this DVD, we'll show you individual offensive tactics, as well as team offensive tactics in the defensive zone, the neutral zone, and the offensive zone. For individual players and for the entire team, offensive creativity is the key to keeping the defense guessing and generating scoring chances. Skating, puck control, and shooting skills are used in combination as individual offensive tactics to deceive or beat a defender. It's the mastery of these fundamental skills, combined with creativity, that makes players dangerous offensively. Nothing is quite as exciting to watch or strikes fear into defenders more than players that are a threat to score every time they touch the puck. The following individual offensive tactics will provide any player with an arsenal of moves to help create excitement and generate scoring opportunities. Body Fix When trying to deceive or sell the defender on a particular move, having the ability to perform a head or body fake is essential. A player can either shift the body inside or outside, or drop the shoulder to convince the defender they're going in a different direction. Players can also deceive a defender with a combination of head and eye movements. Now, these fakes should be performed beyond the range of the defender's stick. The player can then move laterally around the defender. Here, the attacker drops the shoulder, then cuts back toward the center of the ice. Stick fakes. Ultimately, there's only one part of a player's equipment that can be used to control the puck, the stick. Because the defending player must always be aware of the attacking player's stick, stick fakes are an excellent tactic to use to buy time and space. They can be performed by moving the stick laterally across the body, faking a pass or shot, or simply by taking one hand off the stick. Fake inside, go outside. Using a combination of head, body, and stick fakes, the puck carrier fakes to the inside in an attempt to drive the defender toward the center of the ice. This inside fake should create space for the puck carrier to then attack with speed to the outside around the defender. Fake outside, go inside. The fake outside go inside is intended to deceive the defender into thinking that the attacker is going to drive wide. This fake to the outside should open up space in the center of the ice for the puck carrier. Change of pace. Changing pace is the key to increasing the time and space needed to generate offensive opportunities. Notice how the player here slows down when approaching the defender and then quickly accelerates. See how the ability to skate deceptively can allow the puck carrier to take advantage of a defender. In this second example, the player skates at full speed, then suddenly slows down, creating space between himself and the defender. A third change of pace tactic is the quick stop. The puck carrier attacks with speed to drive the defender off, here again, stopping quickly allows the puck carrier to create space between himself and the defender. Fake Pass A player can initiate a fake pass from either the forehand or the backhand. By appearing to initiate a passing motion with the arms and stick, the attacker can freeze the defender. Again, creating the necessary time and space to allow the attacker to accelerate by.
look away. A great deceptive tactic, an effective look away relies on the puck carrier's ability to deceive the defender by looking in one direction but actually passing in another. So, as we can see here, by looking the defender off, the puck carrier creates an opportunity to move the puck to other support options. Fake pass, toe drag. The fake pass toe drag is normally used when the puck carrier is on the forehand. As the defender moves to intercept the anticipated pass, the attacker uses the toe drag to draw the puck across his body taking advantage of the open space to go around the defender. Fake drop pass. The fake drop pass is a particularly effective tactic to use to cause a defender to lunge or move laterally. Typically in the fake drop pass, the attacking player carries the puck on the forehand, makes a motion as if dropping the puck to a teammate, then accelerates on the forehand around the defender. Fake pass, shoot. The fake pass shoot is very effective when the puck carrier can make the goalie anticipate a lateral pass. Drawing the puck into a passing position forces the goaltender to respect the pass option, leaving the puck carrier with a better opportunity to score on the short side. Fake shot, deke. The fake shot deke is used to momentarily freeze the defender into shot blocking mode. This fake should be performed beyond the range of the defender's poke check, allowing the attacker to maintain control of the puck. Fake wrist shot. The fake wrist shot is typically used from the top of the face-off circles and in. By pulling the puck into shooting position, the puck carrier can freeze the defender. This momentary hesitation gives the attacker space to move the puck laterally around the defender while accelerating by with speed. Fake slap shot. The fake slap shot is normally used when the puck carrier is moving in on a defender near the attacking blue line. After faking the shot, the attacker moves the puck wide, then accelerates around the defender. Fake shot, pass. The fake shot pass is deceptive because it not only freezes the defender, it also forces the goaltender to commit to the anticipated shot. The key here is the puck carrier's ability to really sell the shot aspect of this fake before passing the puck laterally to a teammate. Fake shot, shoot. The puck carrier typically uses this fake to cause the goaltender or defenseman to freeze and readjust or to gain a better shooting angle. After faking the shot, the attacker can choose to shoot at a more exposed part of the net or move to find a better opening. Puck Protection Basics The following three drill sequence is designed to teach the offensive player the keys to puck protection. Players who are great at protecting the puck have learned to use their body to build a wall between themselves and the defender. By extending the stick away from the defender and keeping the feet moving, the attacker can gain an offensive advantage. Good puck protection is important, and as we will see, it's an essential offensive skill used in turnbacks, loose puck battles, and offensive zone play. Puck protection, turnbacks. When the defensive team is pressuring the puck carrier and there are few or no support options, 
the puck carrier can execute a turnback. An effective turnback involves a 180 degree change in direction, accomplished by performing a tight turn while protecting the puck. The puck carrier then uses his body as a wall or shield to protect the puck from the defending player. Puck protection, loose puck. When players have possession along the boards or in open ice, they can use their body, stick, and skates to hold off checkers. Maintaining good balance and staying aware of the checker's positioning enables the player with possession to retain control. Attack triangle, puck under stick. Normally, when a defender is in good position, a triangle shape forms between the legs and stick. Now, while this is correct defensive posture, a puck carrier can take advantage of it by moving the puck laterally under the stick. Here, as he slides the puck under the defender's stick, the puck carrier lifts his own stick over the defender's to pick up the puck on the other side. Attack triangle, puck between legs. Attacking the triangle between the legs requires drawing the puck wide outside the reach of the defender and then sliding it through the defender's legs. The attacker can now step around the defender and pick up the puck on the backside. Puck back through legs. Pulling the puck back through the legs is a very deceptive move one-on-one. -on -one. Taking the puck out to the forehand side and behind the body is intended to deceive the defenseman into thinking the puck carrier may pass. Once the defender commits to intercept the anticipated pass, the puck carrier then uses the toe of the stick to pull the puck back through the legs. Toe drag. A great time to use the toe drag is when the defender thinks that the attacker has lost control of the puck. The more quickly the attacker pulls the puck toward the body and accelerates by the defender, the more effective this move will be. Body puck opposite. This move is intended to confuse the defender. The body puck opposite should be performed outside the range of the defender's poke check. Keeping the puck out wide away from the body freezes the defender, giving the attacker the opportunity to make another offensive move. Double fake. Here, the puck carrier uses a series of head, eye, and body fakes to confuse the defender. A well-executed double fake leaves the attacker in position to perform another one-on-one -on -one move to escape around the defender. Slider. At full speed, the slider is very deceptive, combining a wide lateral move with a unique hand motion. Drawing the puck on the backside of the blade gives defenders a look they rarely see when playing a one-on-one. -on -one. The initial move of turning the blade over can deceive the defender into thinking that the puck carrier may stop quickly on the backhand. Here, the momentary hesitation by the defender creates the opportunity for the attacker to draw the puck laterally and move past the defender. Spinorama. The spinorama causes a defender to turn in the direction that the puck carrier initially appears to be going. Protecting the puck with the body, the puck carrier then accelerates quickly, performs a 270 degree turn, then moves into the open space behind the defender. 360 move. 
The 360 is a very effective move if the puck carrier can force the defender to either commit or hesitate. This opens up space behind the defender where through good puck protection, the puck carrier can spin and attack the open ice. Drop puck in skates. In this move, the puck is dropped to the skates and kicked back up to the stick. The intent here is to make the defender believe that the attacker has lost control of the puck. As the defender lunges forward, the attacker pulls the puck back up to the stick and accelerates by. Puck outside defenseman, body inside. The key to this move is the ability to carry the puck wide with only one hand on the stick. Like many other one-on-one -on -one moves, carrying the puck wide ideally causes the defender to lunge for the puck. The attacker can now tap the puck around the defender, then step inside to retrieve it. Toe drag, puck off skate. In this move, the attacker redirects the puck off the inside or outside of his skate blade after executing a toe drag. Redirecting the puck in the opposite direction allows the puck carrier to attack. Leave puck, go around. This is a one-on-one -on -one move that an attacker can use when the defender attempts to play the body instead of the puck. As the defender steps up, the attacker lets the puck continue to slide while sidestepping the defender's check. Miss puck, then deke. The miss puck, then deke maneuver can fool the defender into thinking that the attacker will either shoot or skate in another direction. Intentionally missing the puck freezes the defender and allows the puck carrier to then execute a deke to attack the open ice. Flip puck over stick. This skill is normally used when a player is cutting to either side and has to flip the puck up in the air to get around the defender. The success of this move depends on the attacker's ability to make a quick lateral move to retrieve the puck. Defender as a screen. Using the defender as a screen when taking a shot on goal can be a very successful offensive play. Here, with the puck on the outside of the defender's midline, the puck carrier attempts to change the shooting angle. As the defender moves across, the puck is shot between her legs toward the net. The purpose is to hide the release of the puck making it harder for the goaltender to prepare for the shot. Heel to heel move. When the puck carrier has control of the puck along the boards, but not much room to maneuver, he can perform a heel to heel move. Turning both skates outward 180 degrees and using his momentum to glide on the inside edges, the attacker moves laterally to slip between the defender and the boards. Back pass off boards. A back pass off the boards is generally used by a player when he's under close checking pressure. The attacker chips the puck off the boards behind him and picks it up on the other side. The key to this move is drawing the defender into overplaying the puck before chipping it back against the flow of play. Bounce puck off net. Similar to the previous tactic, bouncing the puck off the back of the net allows the attacker to literally rebound the puck around the defender. Here, the puck carrier anticipates the angle of the rebound off the net and picks up the puck on the other side of the defender. Close available support. 
Close and quick support is key for effective team play. Players without the puck should always be thinking and moving, ready to support the puck carrier. By moving to open space and creating passing lanes for the player with the puck, the non-puck carrier creates increased offensive opportunities. Picks and screens. Picks and screens are off-the-puck tactics that can lead to offensive success. Here, the non-puck carrier reads the play and steps in front of the defender, opening a lane to the net for the puck carrier. So essentially, the non-puck carrier has effectively created offense, even without the puck. Decoy skate. Decoy skating is a tactic that a player without the puck can use to distract or engage the opposition. Here, you can see how the defender is decoyed into believing that the non-puck carrier is a threat to go in on goal, ultimately opening up the middle of the ice for the puck carrier. Defense stagger. If a defenseman has possession of the puck inside his own blue line or in the neutral zone, the defense partner should stagger to the right or left and slightly behind the puck carrying defenseman. This stagger creates a passing lane for the puck carrier and at the same time makes it more difficult for a forechecking player to take away the passing option. Flat skating. A non-puck carrier can create better passing angles and passing options for the puck carrier by cutting sharply at the blue line, then moving laterally across the ice. Flat skating is an important element in offensive tactics like the stretch pass, mid-lane support, and regroups. Control skating. By controlling the pace of skating, the player without the puck can provide a better passing option for the puck carrier, while at the same time posing another threat for the defender to think about. Here, the player without the puck slows down, creating a passing option for the puck carrier. Facing the puck carrier. Facing the puck carrier is an important off-the-puck tactic that all players should master. For the non-puck carrier, the execution of open pivots and being able to turn effectively are essential to being in position to receive a pass. Saving ice. In this skill, the non-puck carrier moves laterally, providing a better passing option for the puck carrier. Saving ice can be a difficult concept for young players to learn, but successfully developing this skill will create many more options offensively. Going on offense in the defensive zone starts when the defensive team regains possession of the puck or creates a turnover in its own zone. Moving the puck quickly up ice is the key to offensive success. The ability of the players without the puck to effectively support the puck carrier can turn a collection of good offensive players into a great offensive team. Escape moves. A key tactic used by players in control of the puck in their own defensive zone is an escape move. The puck carrier creates time and space by faking and then tight turning away from the pressure. Using this maneuver opens up ice for the puck carrier to either skate with the puck or make a pass to a supporting teammate. Puck Retrieval Basics Effective retrieval of the puck is essential in initiating a breakout. 
proper execution of the retrieval also helps to ensure the safety of the player picking up the puck. Facing up ice, the retriever has to identify where the puck is located, then pivot to begin the retrieval. Now, as he's skating toward the puck, the retriever needs to check over his shoulder to see where the checking pressure is coming from, and then make a good fake before picking up the puck. Puck retrieval, quick up. If the checking pressure is coming from the inside, the most suitable evasive move is a tight turn. In this case, the defenseman needs to read the pressure from the inside. Reading the play correctly, the player executes a tight turn away from the pressure, creating an opportunity to either skate with the puck or pass to an outlet player. Puck retrieval, wheel. If the checking pressure is coming from the outside and the pursuit continues behind the goal, the defenseman should quickly round the net and turn off ice. Again, in this situation, the right read is the key. The open space should be used by the defenseman to accelerate up ice with the puck. Puck retrieval, turn back. Here, if the checking pressure comes from the outside and the opposing player overcommits in front of the net, the defenseman either performs a tight turn or, while facing up ice, stops, then skates out. Ultimately, the puck retriever must be able to read where the pressure is coming from, then take advantage of the open ice. Puck retrieval, overpass. The offside defenseman or non-puck carrier also has key responsibilities in the defensive zone. His read of the checking pressure and the appropriate call to the puck retriever is important communication, providing additional support to help the retriever make the best decision. If the checking pressure is coming from straight on, he should tell his partner to pass the puck over and away from the pressure, then react to his own read, supporting the pass by moving down low. Puck retrieval, reverse pass. Here, if the checking pressure is coming from the outside and the opposing player overcommits and pursues behind the net, the best option for the defenseman without the puck is to call reverse to his partner, changing the direction of play. Tactically, the non-puck carrier must react to the play and support the reverse. Direct pass, wall. When a defenseman gains control of the puck in the defensive zone, the forward closest to the puck, or the strong side forward, must provide immediate low support along the boards. The forward performs a reverse pivot to maintain speed and eye contact with the puck-carrying defenseman, providing him with a low-risk passing option. Direct pass, mid lane. If the direct pass to the wall is not an option, the defenseman can choose a center or mid lane passing option. A good rule of thumb for the supporting forward is to skate mirroring the flow of the puck one stride behind. Here, timing is critical. The forward may need to save ice by taking a deeper and or wider skating route. Rim pass. The rim pass is a great tactic to use when the puck carrier is under extreme pressure and doesn't have any other options available. The supporting forward, with his feet facing up ice and back against the wall, can use his skate or stick to corral the puck along the boards. Direct pass. Relay. If the mid lane support player isn't receiving a direct pass, he should be available to receive a relay pass from the player anchored against the wall. 
Here, the anchor reads the support from the mid lane and then redirects the puck to the support player. Direct pass, punch back. This pass is used if a player along the wall is under pinching pressure after receiving a pass from the defenseman. A one-touch pass from the anchored forward back to the initiating defenseman. The punch back allows the forward to avoid the pinch. Direct pass, slash. When the mid lane support player gets ahead of the play and is no longer a good passing option for the anchor, the offside winger should provide support. Using a slash skating route, the offside winger in the support position can now provide the passing option for the anchor. The lead forward creates space for the pass to be made by pushing back the strong side defender. Chip pass. A second or even a third pass may often be necessary to complete a quick, successful breakout from the defensive zone. Utilizing the boards as an indirect passing option, the player with the puck can either chip pass to himself, chip to the player coming across in mid-lane support, or after receiving a pass from the original puck carrier, the mid-lane support player can then chip it to the offside winger coming across. A team breaking out of its own zone needs to maintain speed and control through the neutral zone to effectively penetrate the offensive zone. Through individual, two-player, and team tactics, the offensive team can create a series of threats through the neutral zone that will keep defenders guessing about how to react to the offensive pressure. Cross and drop. A cross can be initiated by either the puck carrier or a non-puck carrier. In the cross and drop technique, the player with the puck crosses in a flat arc in front of the player without the puck. The player without the puck supports behind the puck carrier and after receiving the drop pass, attacks with speed. Effective execution of the cross and drop will force the defender to move laterally to defend the play. Pass and follow. In the pass and follow technique, the puck carrier attempts to confuse the defender by changing lanes after the pass to become a return option, allowing the new puck carrier to then change lanes to attack one on one or pass to a teammate. Cross and carry. The cross and carry is much like the cross and drop, except in this case, the puck carrier retains possession of the puck. Cutting in a flat arc causes the defender to have to wait much longer to make a decision. Cross and lateral pass. In the cross and lateral pass, the puck carrier and non-puck carrier perform a cross in the neutral zone to get the defenseman to either move laterally or turn to face the puck carrier. This crossing action provides space for the non-puck carrier to receive a lateral pass in the offensive zone. Give and go. While it can be utilized anywhere on the ice, the give and go is most often used in the neutral zone. As shown here, the puck carrier passes to a teammate, then quickly gets in position to receive a return pass. When performed effectively, the give and go increases the speed of the attack and gives the initial passer the opportunity to slip by the defender. Headman. Headmanning the puck to a teammate increases the speed of the offensive rush. 
This maneuver forces the defense to adjust to the changing point of attack, which in turn opens up space offensively. It is important for the attacking team to move quickly to support the puck carrier. Stretch skate and pass. With the removal of the center ice red line from all amateur hockey in Canada, the stretch skate and pass has become an increasingly effective offensive tactic. With his team in possession of the puck inside its own blue line, the non-puck carrier skates toward the opposition blue line. This stretch makes the non-puck carrier a breakaway threat. Chip pass. Here, with the defending player closing in, the puck carrier uses the boards to chip the puck to an open teammate. Practicing chip passes frequently will allow players to become familiar with how hard and at which angle the puck should be played off the boards. Pass redirection. Redirecting a pass requires soft hands and available support. This is a great tactic for the initial pass receiver to use when he's under pressure or when a teammate has good attacking speed through the neutral zone. Simply redirecting or touch passing the puck to the support player opens up additional attack options. Area pass. An area pass is used to deliver the puck to a space where the receiver will skate into it. It's like the long bomb in football. The pass is literally sent to an area where the passer believes the receiver can get to it. Ladder. A ladder play is used to move the puck quickly up ice with a series of short, high percentage passes. The attacking team can use the ladder as a reasonably low risk tactic in the neutral zone to catch four checkers off guard. Jackhammer. Basically, the jackhammer is a very effective way to redistribute the puck to attackers that have gained speed through the neutral zone. First, the player receiving the original pass reads which teammate is the best passing option based on the defensive coverage. Then, one touches the puck to that player. Regroups. When a puck carrier has been steered to the outside with no passing options, a regroup can be used to maintain possession of the puck. Here, by utilizing either a tight turn or a turn back, the puck carrier can play the puck back toward his own goal to a defenseman or a support forward. The regroup allows the offensive team to retain possession and attempt another attack into the offensive zone. Counterattacks. A counterattack can occur as soon as the defending team has regained control of the puck. The key here is to now use quick puck movement to take advantage of the opposing team's poor defensive positioning. A team that has gained the opposition blue line and entered the offensive zone is in an excellent position to generate scoring opportunities. Entering the offensive zone can be accomplished through individual tactics like one-on-ones or outnumbered situational team tactics such as two-on-ones or three-on-twos, all of which give a distinct advantage to the offensive team. Net Drive Ideally, the attacking team should always be a threat to take the puck to the net. The net drive involves a fake by the puck carrier. 
followed by a lateral move and quick acceleration. After gaining the outside lane, the puck carrier should keep his feet moving and cut in after picking up a stride on the defender. An effective net drive will improve the puck carrier's shooting angle and also open up other attack options. Middle drive. An effective way to literally drive the defenseman toward the front of the net. The middle drive creates opportunities to score on a possible cross-crease pass or a rebound. Players executing a middle drive must be taught to stop at the net at all times. High delay. When the puck carrier starts to drive the net and reads that the defender has taken away the lane, the puck carrier can then turn away from the defender to gain time and space. This high delay provides the attacker with the options of walking to the net or cycling the puck low into the corner to maintain possession. Low delay. When there's no lane available to the net deep in the offensive zone, the puck carrier can use the low delay to help retain possession. Here, the attacker's options are walking to the net, passing to a teammate, or maintaining puck possession low in the corner. Attack triangle. Drive, drive, high support. The 1-2-3 attack triangle is based on the offensive principles of puck control, pressure, and balance. To be effective, the puck carrier must be a threat to attack the net. Now, this will usually take the form of a driving to the net action, forcing one defender to go with the puck carrier. The second attacker pressures the net at the backside post to create a passing option for the puck carrier or to draw the second defender deep into the zone. Now a third attacker or high support trails the play by slowing down and drifting toward the puck carrier's lane. This not only establishes depth to the attack, it also puts the third attacker in a support position if the attacking team loses possession of the puck. Attack triangle. Drive, middle drive, high support. In this second attack triangle option, the puck carrier drives to the outside, while the second player drives to the net through the middle lane, creating a passing option for the puck carrier while driving the offside defenseman deep into the zone. The third player, or high support, reads the middle drive and flat skates inside the blue line to provide puck support and an additional passing option. Attack triangle. Puck high, drive, drive. Here, the puck carrier cuts to the middle of the ice, creating width to the attack by staying high close to the blue line. The second player into the zone crosses with the puck carrier, filling the outside lane as a threat to the net. The third player also drives to the net from the outside. These two outside drives create pressure on the net and scoring opportunities from tips, deflections, and rebounds. Fourth attacker. Good defensive teams rely on backside pressure to disrupt the attack. Now, in order to combat this pressure offensively, a fourth player, usually a defenseman, should move up ice to be an option in the offensive zone. Joining the rush quickly from behind, this fourth attacker coming into the play can make it difficult for the defenders to decide which player to check. High walkout. The high walkout is a great tactic to use when the puck carrier has control of the puck in the corner. To create pressure on goal, the puck carrier drives off the boards in a semicircle pattern, 
keeping his feet constantly moving while walking high to the net. Low walkout. In a low walkout, the puck carrier creates a seam to the net below or behind the goal line. Faking high fools the defender. The attacker creates space to take the puck low, beating the defender to the near post. Behind the net, walkout. Here, controlling the puck behind the goal, the puck carrier uses a fake to create his own lane to the front of the net, setting up his own scoring chance. Wrap around, near post. A wraparound is simply taking the puck quickly around the net in an attempt to beat the goalie. In the wraparound near post, the puck carrier tries to stuff the puck in tight underneath the goaltender or before the goalie can come across. Wraparound, far post. Here on the wraparound, the puck carrier aims across the crease at the far post it's an effective scoring tactic because the puck is shot back in the direction the goaltender came from, making it difficult to defend. Fake wraparound, pivot and shoot. When the goaltender comes across the net, paddle down, the fake wraparound, pivot and shoot can get the puck high over the goalie. Here, instead of trying to stuff the puck on the backhand, the puck carrier steps out, pivots, and shoots high on his forehand. Fake wraparound, pass short side. The fake wraparound, pass short side, is a move that plays the puck back against the flow. As the puck carrier performs a wraparound-like move, she plays the puck back in front of the net to a teammate. This play is very effective if the goaltender moves away from the near post and across the net. Give and go out of corner. In the give and go out of the corner, the puck carrier passes to an open teammate, forcing the defender to commit to the new puck carrier. The original puck carrier now skates into the open lane for a return pass. Give and go behind net. Here, the puck carrier gets the puck to the support player behind the goal. Using the protected area behind the net, the support player waits for the original puck carrier to get open before sending a return pass. Low cycle. Basically the purpose of cycling is to use the quiet zones of the ice to maintain puck possession. In the low cycle, the player with the puck using good puck protection techniques spot passes the puck off the boards. The forward in front of the net reads the cycle and jumps down to pick up the puck while the high forward rotates to position in front of the net. Ideally, the cycle confuses the defensive coverage, opening a skating or passing lane to the net. High cycle. Here, as the puck carrier moves the puck along the boards, the defenseman at the point activates, skating between the puck carrier and the boards. As they meet, the puck carrying forward leaves the puck for the defenseman, then attempts to take the opposing defender with him. This creates space for the puck carrying defenseman to threaten the net or look for passing options. Behind the net cycle. One of the keys to success of the cycle 
is the use of player movement. In the cycle behind the net, the puck carrier sets the puck toward the back of the goal and steps out in front of the net. The support forward then jumps to the loose puck and makes a play to the net. Double side cycle. In the double side cycle, the offensive team commits a third forward low. Off the initial spot, the second forward jumps to the puck, but reverses the puck behind the net. If at any point in the cycle an opening to the net is created, the offensive team must take advantage. Change point of attack. Changing the point of attack can be a very successful tactic to use if the opponent's defense has overplayed the rush. With both opposing defensemen on the puck side of the ice, the puck carrier can soft dump the puck to the far side, enabling the weak side support forward to quickly establish control and refocus the attack. Drag and shoot. The drag and shoot is a tactic typically used by defensemen to take a shot from the point. Here, the player pulls the puck to the center of the ice, looking to gain a better angle and shooting lane. By using the drag and shoot, the offensive defenseman creates a better chance for pucks to get to the net. Sprint and shoot. Here, the sprint and shoot is initiated by a defenseman or point man on his off wing. In this case, the player pushes the puck to the middle of the ice, looking to find the best shooting lane. One-timers. A difficult skill to perfect, the one-timer is nevertheless an effective shot to use before the defense has an opportunity to set up. The shooter reads the timing and angle of the pass and immediately shoots the puck without stopping it. This is a difficult shot for goaltenders and defenders to handle because they have to move laterally to defend against the play. Defense back here, activating off a set play in the offensive zone, the weak side defenseman, using effective timing and control skating, moves in from the point looking for a cross-ice pass or a pass from a player behind the net. <laughs> 